Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and this is not an installment of last week Lolita News. Instead, you're here for my first Q&A. All right, now that I can drop that, uh, question the first. Amalia asked, what was your first dress? Was it a dream dress or just a basic? My first dress was actually from Bodyline and I bought it in the live journal days for 30 whole dollars. I was extremely excited and I still have it to this day. And I will put a picture here or here. I'm not sure which space has more. I didn't memorize it. Oh, my camera person says here. Thank you for interjecting really, really late after I did a little dance. Next question. If you didn't love Sweet Lolita so much, what would be your go-to? And this is from Amanda. Honestly, classic. I know it's a shocker given that I have goth leanings, but I just like this ridiculous OTT faux classic that's gone around in recent times. And I just like all the wines and the Bordeaux's and emerald green and all that pretty oversaturated colors. And that, that's where I'd go. I'd go for classic. Clayton asked, a Lolita I know mentioned Brolitas once. Are they really a thing? Well, they're a thing. <laughs> Brolitas are simply men who wear Lolita fashion. Some people don't want to be called Brolitas. They would rather just be called Lolitas. So they're just guys that wear Lolita. There's some issues with them, on the other hand, because we have some guys, who shall not be named, who pretend to be Brolitas, but are in fact giant sissies, which is a problem. Pretty much the way you separate the two is a Brolita will eventually improve, a sissy will always be a dumpster fire. Always. But some men, instead of going for the OG look, which is masculine specific, but somehow worn largely by women, um, some men just want to wear Lolita and there's nothing wrong with that. So long as they're not creepy and in it for some weird fetish that we really, really don't want to participate in. So yeah, go, go live your frilly dreams, men. Just don't give me nightmares. That's all I'm asking. You should have, have pictures. Oh know, yeah. Pull up pictures and also, um, when you, when you talk about how they're sissies, link to your Sex Proves That Ruin Lolita video so people can click on that and know what you're talking about. My cameraman has reminded me that I made a whole video about that. I'm sorry. Here it is. <laughs> Anne asked, what is your process? Not just the filming and editing, but the research and writing for your videos is so thorough, I'd be interested to hear you talk a bit in depth about it. How you decide on topics for the installments and what type of research you do, slash how much, slash et cetera. Well, I'm a master of et cetera. All right, my process is, it's, it's pretty simple. I, uh, I follow various communities. Um, I scroll through Facebook. We're talking like Ruffle Chat, Lolita Humor, Lolita Updates, etc. cetera. Uh, I follow online forums. Sometimes I go through Twitter to follow brand releases, Instagram. Oh God, I mean, if it's frilly and it's online, I'm on it. And process is pretty simple. After I go through all these communities, I'm essentially amalgamating information. And this can be screen caps, research sources, photographs, like it doesn't matter what. If it's pertaining to the community and it looks interesting, funny, or cringeworthy, I've got it on my laptop by the end. And after I've amalgamated all these things, I will take one laptop, which is for the editing, and that's where all the photos are, and move to another laptop, which is my shitty laptop. It runs on shame at best. It's very old, but it has Microsoft Word. And I will look at the first laptop for all the images and videos that I've downloaded and write the script from this laptop. So everything, these the treasure troves of information that I've, I've put into folder upon folder upon folder, I'm talking like encyclopedic here. I will gather more than I ever need because I want to have a thorough understanding of what went down. Because sometimes screen caps can be fake. Photos can be fake, videos can be manipulated. So you want to gather as much info as possible in the hopes that you won't get fucked up. I can tell you a specific instance, actually. Um, the, what was it? I want to rick your, your, what was it? You're pushy. You're pushy, that's right. I was like, he didn't say, uh, 
I want to rick your pushy specifically. Those screen caps, there were screen caps that were actually edited to make it seem like he was talking to himself and the girl wasn't responding when in fact she was responding. Now does that make I want to rick your pushy any more palatable? No, but it makes it more accurate. And that's why you get as much information as possible. So yeah, I just, I gather as much info as I can from the interwebs, from the frilly interwebs, and I translate that into a script, and hopefully something compelling comes out of it. Catharsis, something, something to make it worth the mental scarring. Since there is some interest in the creative process behind LWLN, I am thinking of doing a making of an episode sometime in the future, so stand by for that. That'll be a whole thing, because this is just, everything on these laptops is just the, the tip of the iceberg to use that. Just so much, so much goes into it. All right, next. Yeah. Mention how many, mention real quick, how many hours you think go into an average episode. Oh God. Spend, it takes a, a lot of hours. How many hours go into an average episode? So too many. Ah, oh, God. I mean, it depends on what phase you're in. Research can take days, like I said, because I'm gathering everything. There is so much that I have on these laptops that never make it into an episode just so I can get a full understanding of what's going on. And you can still miss things, even with well, days just, of research. Quick, say on your average episode, not like a massive one like the Kelly Eden one, how many hours do you think you spend God. researching and editing? The filming itself goes quick. The filming goes quicker than everything Researching else. Researching and editing is like what takes up most of your time. Researching and editing is the lion's share of making an episode. I mean, you can take days researching. So on an average episode, I mean, you've got at least a week sunk in. And that's like a seven minute or that's no big deal episode. I mean, if I stay up all night and don't sleep for days, which I've done too often, uh, I mean, you can whack out an episode in four or five days if you do that, but uh, you're dead after for months. So yeah, it, it takes a week to get a, a good seven minute episode, which gives me a lot of respect for people who do movies, like full length films. That's like a year, you know, minimum in the bag. So it's like a week for seven minutes of content. It's a lot, but it's worth it. My therapist thinks so anyway. All right, next. I think your name is Jay Luis. I probably butchered it. Jay Luis asked, what inspired you to create LWLN? Was there any particular situation that determined it? Okay. Uh, all right, first and foremost, uh, there on the online forums, there's always there was always this question bandied about like, why isn't there a Lolita news show? There should be a Lolita like news update channel like why isn't there a source for like lolita news and people would agree and they would all nod their heads and then no one would do it so that went on for a couple of years and eventually i was just like all right i'll do it but there's more to that believe it or not my initial inspiration to become a youtuber came from a fellow youtuber called the angry video game nerd and specifically one of his making of AVGN videos, which is weird because our styles are dead opposite from each other, but there was something about watching that video that just made me want to try it, which was crazy because I have no background in video. I was not a journalist. I did not work in the video section of uh, my photography class. I took pictures of some trees at best. But something about his presentation and his video made me want to become a YouTuber. And that is the reason that I am a YouTuber today. As for other inspirations for LWLN, the obvious one is Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. If you haven't seen that show, you should. It's amazing. But also a source that some of you may not know is Bill Maher, specifically Real Time with Bill Maher. I like to think of my show as a, essentially a baby, a weird bastard baby between Bill Maher and John Oliver. So the long-windedness of John Oliver with the biting acidity of Bill Maher. So it's a horrible, awful demon baby is my show between these two with a sprinkling of George Carlin, honestly. I love me some George Carlin. Some things haven't aged well, but he taught me some things. Ada, Ada, Ada or Ada 
asks, how did you discover Lolita fashion? Goth fashion. <laughs> Outside of Lolita, I am a rivet head slash death rock inspired mess. And one day I was researching goth fashion on Google Images and Gothic Lolita came up. And that is how I discovered Lolita fashion. And I started out, believe it or not, as a goth Lolita. Honestly, the EGL community on LiveJournal is what really helped me discover everything outside of the Google image search. Like EGL came up pretty much immediately, the EGL community. And I spent days, weeks, just researching everything I could get my hands on. And I didn't step a toe in the water for months because it became pretty clear pretty fast that there were a lot of pitfalls, potential pitfalls in this fashion. And I was not about to commit any sins, not on my first time in. So I waited, I researched, and I owe a lot of my non EDA days to the EGL community on LiveJournal. Lois asked, what is your opinion on handmade Lolita? Would you ever buy a handmade dress if you like it enough? All right, handmade Lolita impresses the hell out of me. I sewed a head bow once and that's the extent of my abilities. So good on any of you who can sew in a straight line or at all, I'm impressed. That said, my heart belongs to Angelic Pretty. I'm 100% in it for the prints. There are some exceptions dress wise and brand wise. Baby and Meta are occasionally acceptable, but I am just an AP print brand whore at heart. I can't help it. I love it so much. And you guys should just go on being awesome and leave me to the pits of my brand addiction. Maddie asks, would you ever consider doing a compilation of all your best slash favorite outtakes? Oh Lordy, um, I'm gonna have to start saving them first. <laughs> To save space on my computer with all my research and nonsense. Now granted, I have like, I have jump drives and what have you to back things up on obviously, but I've had to start deleting all the old footage, not the videos mind you, but the old footage that I didn't use in the video. So it's the raw footage. I've had to start deleting that. And I like the idea of an outtake episode or some kind of blooper reel. But to do that, I'm gonna have to start going in and clipping out the many, many, many mistakes made specifically. So we'll see, we'll see on that. I'd like to do it, but I'm gonna have to start actually saving my footage. Ashley asks, how many takes does it take for an average episode? All right, this one's a fun one because it used to take a million because I used to have to memorize my scripts verbatim. Not kidding. I would do this to myself. I would write a paragraph or two that was somehow one sentence to be said in one breath and I would memorize it. This was before I actually made a teleprompter, which I will show you a picture of here because my cameraman says here is where the gap is. Mind the gap. I made it out of two picture frames and some like hardboard and some like, they're curtain screws. They're supposed to like hold things up. I can't remember, eyelet screws or something like that. I found a tutorial on the internet and I grabbed my little $15 worth of supplies and I put them all together and I use an app on my phone, which is a teleprompter app and I reflect it onto the glass, the camera shoots through it and I just, now I read off of, uh, off of my script, which is now on my phone. So it is much, easier to make an episode now. Much, much easier than memorizing it by rote. Don't even want to remember that. There's still outtakes. I mean, you're asking how many takes? There's still outtakes and I'm reading it. <laughs> so imagine how bad it was before. We're talking 50% fuck up. It was bad. It's still bad, but it's less bad. Hope that answers your question. Does that answer her question? You do like two, three takes now? Yeah, so it's like it's like two or three takes on average. Right. Two, three if I fuck up the first two times, and if I do well, one take. Whereas it used to be like 50. Oh my God, it used to be 10 minimum. Yeah. Because I would write a paragraph and pretend it was a sentence. It's a me problem, okay? It's a me problem. All right, let's move on to the next one. Marion Ass, Ass, Marion Ass, lovely name. Uh, Marion asks, what's the most annoying thing that you get asked while in Lolita? I really only get the 
you know, are you Bo Peep? Are you in a play? Which, of course, you know, every actor wears their costume in a Costco. I mean, duh. Nah, honestly, the general public has been pretty nice to me. So I haven't gotten any like annoying comments outside of your, your regular, like, you know, what's the occasion? Which, can you blame them? We look like Pepto princesses out there, like what's happening? But no, I mean, old men love it, little old ladies love it, little kids love it, teenagers snicker, but they don't even know who they are yet, you can't blame them. So no, it's, it's been nice out. I've heard other girls get asked weird things, but for the most part, I've been okay. Maybe I travel in groups too often, I don't know. But no, it's been good, it's been good. Good on you, public. Tamika asks, how would you feel about reviving your goth content? Any of you who've seen my old videos know that I used to do videos specifically pertaining to goth and dressed in goth. Not always at the same time, but it was a goth feel. I even had a goth background. You can go check them out if you want. I don't recommend it, but you can. And the thing about goth fashion is, while I started out making goth videos, or wearing the fashion, goth related content is a closed box. I mean, you can only discuss so many things before you end up either doing makeup tutorials or talking about bands. And goth, the goth community is so large that it doesn't need to be gathered around a single watering hole quite like the Lolita community is. Like if you get on Facebook, for the Lolita community, you can pretty much find the whole community. A lot of people are gathered in one place, whereas with the goth community, they're so accessible, it's so mainstream, honestly. I hate to, hate to whip that word out on you goth people, it hurts my soul too. But it's so mainstream and so well accepted and understood that goth people can gather wherever. They don't need a specific group to coalesce in in huge numbers, you know? There's so many little communities for every single type of goth. Unlike Lolita's, which is a smaller subculture, safety in numbers, you know? So, as much as I love my goth content, I don't know if I will ever fully revive it, but I am thinking of doing a kind of one-off goth-related video, which you'll learn more about later. But it sounds interesting, I'm excited, so stay tuned for that. Lolita fashion kind of owns my life. As much as I love goth and I love the music and I love the culture and I love the scene, I mean, we even have a club open weekly where I dance every fracking week and I love it. Which as you're actually going to right after we film which, this video. Which I'm actually going to right after I film this video. Um, Lolita owns my life, you know? I never poured the amount of resources and effort and just time and money into goth fashion because I'm, I make my own shit when I wear goth. You know, I can take a black t-shirt, cut the shit out of it, throw safety pins at it until they stick, and then put it on. That's the whole process. Whereas with Alita, you know, you got shopping services, you got money, you got time, you got research, you gotta check if it fits. You know, there's, there's so much effort and time put into Lolita and I'm so passionate about it. It's worth it to me, you know, where with goth, I listen to the music, I put it on, I go out dancing, you know, that's great. But Lolita owns my closet. Goth is in a drawer, <laughs> you know? I love it, I will always continue to wear it, but Lolita is what owns my soul. Cordelia asks, which was the hardest video to make and why was it the Kelly Eden video? Had to do it to me, didn't ya? Sweet Jesus. All right, to actually get down to the specifics of the Kelly Eden video, that one actually was one of the hardest to make and I'm not just talking about the backlash. We'll get to that. I was using editing techniques that I wasn't familiar with on that video, specifically sampling from someone else's video and framing it so that it was properly sourced even in the video itself, which was time consuming. I had to make this whole frame for it from scratch, which was a real pain in the ass, but I did it specifically so it wouldn't get copyright claimed out of hand too easily. The other part of the reason the Kelly Eden video was probably one of the hardest to make wasn't even part of the making of it, it was part of the post making of it. Her fans were not happy. I know this might surprise some of you, but her fans were not pleased. 
and they're still, to this day, leaving the meanest shit they can possibly cough up. Spelling errors included. It is, it's like you took a dictionary, you shook it, and you threw it at me. I mean, it's, it's odd. Some of it you can't understand. I'm impressed that they took the time and put the effort in, but it's an ongoing process. So that is why the Kelly Eden video is one of the hardest ones that I've made. Ellie asks, what is an aspect of American slash global Lolita culture from the good old days that died off a while ago that you were glad is dead? That's an easy one. If you watched my wardrobe video, you know that I am like 5'8". That's tall for a Lolita. Like that's, that's just Amazonian. And back in the good old days, which I'm glad are dead and gone and buried and will never come back. I love you, Line Journal, but stay dead. It was not acceptable to have any flesh above the knee exposed. And as a tall Lolita, that meant underskirt city. They always look awkward. They never match. And all the short little Lolitas just walk around beautifully coiffed, perfectly fine. And here comes me with a giant curtain below my dress, stomping about like I'm about to take down a city or something, like Lolita Godzilla. I'm glad that's dead. Above the knee is now acceptable as it always should have been. Now we're not talking like flashing people. Don't. But you can have a few inches. It's acceptable now. You don't have to like say three Hail Marys and pray on it anymore. It's nice. It's nice. Kelly asks, how do you keep the energy and love into the fashion going, whether it's in yourself or for your channel slash persona? This one's an easy one, honestly. As much of a salt mine as I am, I kind of love this community. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so lively and diverse, and there's so many different kinds of people in it that you can never get bored. I mean, you might get scarred for life, but you can never get bored. Ever, even if you wanted to. Um, so outside of the community itself, you have so many new releases and so many different brands. And I mean, uh, Taobao, yikes. But <laughs> even Taobao is starting pr to produce things that don't make me want to slam my head against the wall. So it's like you have just this kaleidoscopic selection of different brands and styles and fabrics and the whole nine yards. It's insane. And it's also interesting. There's, it's hard not to love this fashion because if you get bored of one thing, there's a hundred things aimed straight at your face from whatever you use to browse the internet. Like, it's amazing. And as for like the channel and persona, I mean, that reflects back on the community. It's, it's so lively. <laughs> I mean, there are some days that I wish it was less lively because I would like to sleep but it really keeps you going. There's so many different types of people in it, and I don't think it could ever get boring so long as you're properly tuned in. I mean, even my own local community is so interesting. Like, it's, it's so great. There's so many different people, and they're all, God, they're all fucking fantastic. I've heard so many stories about communities that are dead, and mine has meets like almost every week and they're great, and the people are great, and we have fun. Oh, God. Sorry, I was just thinking about it. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I'm really grateful for my local community. Thank you guys for putting up with me. I think that, uh, I think that wraps it up. Yeah. Since I don't have a thing pre-planned, uh, as you know, Lolita Desk is an official sponsor of Last Week Lolita News, so go buy their shit. <laughs> Make them keep me. There's no threat of them leaving, but you know, it wouldn't hurt. So go buy their stuff, they got brand, go buy it. And uh, if you'd like, oh, and I'd like to thank my patrons for putting up with whatever this is supposed to be. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and if you would like to join their ranks, you can head over to patreon.com slash news for more of this. Eh? <laughs> eh? No. Anyway, this has been Tyler. You've been watching Scarfing Scarves, and I'll catch you next time. Um, does OG stand for anything? No. Okay. You can be a noji. <laughs> you want to talk about that? 
Oh God, that's a whole video. Is that the same thing? Is that like the Ida equivalent? That or? yes, okay. a noji. Talk about that. It it, it is. It's um, nojis. Nojis are uh, male Idas in OG. Nojis are exactly what it sounds like. It's it's bargain bin OG, but even more shameful somehow. <laughs>